Welcome to Bridges. I'm Monica Schmelter, and I'm so glad that you could join us today. I am really excited for you to meet my guest today. Her name is Cynthia L. Simmons, and she's written many books. She speaks a lot, and one of the things dear to my heart is that she homeschooled all five of her children and really has a heart to help homeschooling moms and to reach out to young women. Uh, so, Cynthia, it's so good to be able to have you on the program today. Well, it's a delight to be here and have a chance to just chat with you. Yeah. So, because when I think about somebody homeschooling five children, I think, what a sacrifice, what a lot of work. How did that start for you? Well, my daughter, my oldest daughter, went to kindergarten for a few weeks. And when she did, she totally changed. She became rude, disrespectful. You don't know anything. My teacher knows everything. And I thought, oh, I don't really want to live that way. <laughs> and so I decided I'm going to bring her home. Now, I didn't do it for the rest of my life. I did it year by year and just waited to see what my kids would be like. Mm -hmm. Because obviously, I wanted godly character and I wanted them to learn. Sure. And so when I brought them home and started teaching, at that time I only had three. And my kids were polite. They were gracious. They would offer to carry things for me. Mm -hmm. They would offer to pick up things. And, and, and I thought, this is working. Mm -hmm. Now, it's hard for me because I'm working very hard. I had to work on giving myself breaks. But I thought, these kids are thriving. Mm -hmm. And I continued all the way through. That's amazing. And so you can say now, all these years later, that it, the investment, the sacrifice, that it was worth your time. Oh, absolutely. My kids became my friends. Mm -hmm. They became my closest friends, especially as they moved into their teens. Those were special years. Mm -hmm. And I can remember things like we would be teaching, and I had put uh, bird feeders outside our window in a, in a hummingbird feeder, and we got to watch hummingbirds you know, feeding at my hummingbird feeder. And there was one occasion that the bird feeder outside of that there was a mother bird that landed, and the other bird that was with her looked grown, but she grabbed some seeds, and she stuffed it down his throat, and so <laughs> I decided it must be a baby bird, and I said, look at that. Did you know they did that? And we all let, we all just loved it, mm -hmm. and then eventually they both flew off. So I have memories with my kids because I was there in their life. I spent time with them, and I taught them you know, when moments came that they were being selfish or difficult, I would go, okay, which one of you is going to be the one that's going to choose to be other-centered, like it says in Philippians? Mm. And I would teach the Word yeah. all day long. I would just teach. Yeah. It's, uh, you, God gave you a most wonderful opportunity, and I know that that took you time and sacrifice, and your husband, too, you know, had to be in on this, even yes. though he yes. wasn't there doing the homeschooling. It, it, it was a work of the family, and one of the things that you've explained to me, and, and Cynthia L. Simmons also has um, a radio program and, and a bunch of outreaches to women, which I think are also wonderful, but you have a heart to reach today's younger women, and I would love to hear more about that. Well, you know, the Lord has blessed me so abundantly with my family, with my husband. The reason my husband is the way he is today is because of the Word in his life. Mm -hmm. And he was such a blessing to our family in terms of just supporting me, honoring me, and mm -hmm. loving me. And I thought, you know, there is so much out there that is going a, a, a strange direction and people are living in sin. I want to show people how they can have an abundant life. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of people, he is. A lot of people don't have that abundant life right yes. now. A lot of people are struggling under some really heavy burdens, yeah. under a lot of anxiety. Um, a lot of women and men don't really know how to relate to each other anymore. And we mm. see the family unit struggling on, on every end, even in Christian homes. It's, Absolutely. You know, the, the darkness of this world, the pull. I think the expectations that people have, it's really hard mm -hmm. to live under all of that. I, and I would love to hear how you help women. I do want to know, how did you meet your husband? Well, I was in nursing school at the time. Mm -hmm. And I was asking a lot of questions because, you know, I would look at what I was told in the school system and I would go, I don't know about this. And I'd look at Christianity and go, well, they're making claims and the world is making claims that I need to know which one is accurate. Mm -hmm. And so I prayed for the Lord to give me a spiritual leader because I became convinced while I was in nursing school because he began to answer my prayers. Mm -hmm. And so I said, I need to find someone who can guide me spiritually with some of these questions I have. And so I went to church with a friend of mine and began to go there because they were feeding me. They were mm -hmm. giving me answers. But when I met Ray, 
I could get those really deep questions out in the context of a bunch of college kids. Uh -huh. He didn't know those were really heavy on my heart, mm -hmm. and he was answering my questions. And then I ended up marrying him. <laughs> but he gave me that spiritual leader who is a God, I mean, he's such a godly man. Mm -hmm. And I would walk over broken glass to be submissive to him because oh. he honors me. Well, that is wonderful. And that, how many years have you all been married? Forty. Forty years. Okay, so after 40 years, if somebody's still saying they're madly in love with their husband, I want to listen to what they have to say. Yeah. So tell me about some of the outreaches. I know that you've got a radio program. You've got many things that you do. And I'd love to hear your heart in the kinds of topics and things that you cover. I cover just about anything on my radio program that has to do with women. I just got through interviewing someone who was talking about, you know, devotions at home with your kids. Devotions so that all your kids can participate. Because like if you've got several kids and you've got one that's little, how can you get her or the him interested while you're maybe dealing with more difficult issues? Mm -hmm. um, you know, what if you're nervous? What if you're frightened of something? What if you're going through hard times? I address that a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, I did listening, you know, learning to listen because that's a real huge topic when you're talking about kids because sometimes they need to share their heart. Right. And they may end up with emotions that they think are bad, but because they've got those emotions, being able to work through them is really very good. So listening is good. Yeah. Well, and listening, I think, is probably kind of, mostly a lost fine art these days. There are very few people that know how to listen. I'll go into a store and try to explain, you know, what happened with something or why something needs to be returned and people just keep giving me the pat answer. They haven't listened to anything that's I've right. said. Yeah. Yeah. So that's important, mm -hmm. being able to have an atmosphere in your home that's open enough mm -hmm. so your kids can talk about what they're thinking of because you want to keep communication lines open because they may think differently just because of their developmental stage. Yeah. And you had, now you have how, five children? I have five children. And one of them? My youngest is disabled, yes. Yeah. And so were there special challenges in homeschooling with him? Or? Oh my goodness. Oh, it was, it was really hard because I would try to teach him something very simple, like counting. Because my idea of counting was, okay, we'll take some blocks, we'll put one, two, three. We'll pick up a block and say one, the second one two, and the third one three. Well, that was too hard for him because the motor planning it took for the three fingers to pick up one block and put it down was hard. Mm -hmm. That was really hard. But then saying three numbers in order was also very hard. He couldn't do that either. Mm -hmm. So he couldn't do that together. That was impossible. And so he would scream. He would scream. He would scream, I'm stupid. I'm stupid. I'm stupid. Oh, and that had to break your heart, Cynthia. It did. It did. But it told me something at the same time. Because if he said, I'm stupid, it know, he knows he's different. Right. And so I didn't give up. Yeah. And, you know, that, that's one thing that I think that a lot of people miss when someone has a, a challenge. Right. That just because they don't get a concept or they don't understand doesn't mean that they can't see that they're different or that they don't have feelings about that. Right. Because I think people sometimes think, well, gosh, if you can't count, like if you can't do that, I have, I have a brother that has special needs, and so he wouldn't be able to count change from a 20. Like, no, right. like, that was a goal for me as his big sister. I yeah, thought, yeah. you know, I thought, yes, I can teach him to do that. And then I realized he just wasn't ever, ever going to be able to do that, barring a supernatural miracle, but he does know that he's different, and his feelings can be hurt. Yes. And if people look at him or all of that, he knows that that's happening, yes. And I know in my life that that really developed an increased compassion. And I think that's the thing. That's one of the reasons I think God gave me this child. Because my other kids were relatively easy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had a very strong will child, but he was still, I could explain things to him. We could work with him. We could train him. But Caleb was, oh my goodness, hard. Because mm -hmm. he would scream and he would beat himself in the head. <gasps> And I would think, I would feel so oh. badly. And then I would talk him out of that for an hour. And I would think, I'm spending so much time talking him out of that that we finally gave him some medication to help him. Yeah. I can understand that. Could you maybe give some hope to some mom right now that's watching, Cynthia, that has a special needs child? Because what you're describing would really be hurtful and hard for someone. Yes. To watch your child want to inflict pain on themselves or to say that they're stupid and these are things, they happen in all families. Yes, they do. Uh, but how do we respond and what do we do? Well, 
you know, this is how I felt. It was like swallowing razor blades for, black, for breakfast. Aww. So it's hard. But I would stand in my bedroom and I would pray for God to give me grace to go on again that day and keep going and keep training him because I knew there was some intelligence in there. There was a little boy who wanted out and I was going to help him find his way out. I researched as much as I could. I worked with professionals who understood and I learned to master. I mastered his brain, but it had to be long-term thinking. You couldn't be short-term because you'd get frustrated because mm -hmm. in the short term you don't get very far. Yeah. You have to think long term. You have to go 20 years down the road. We'll get this. Mm -hmm. And over time, people would come to me and go, boy, he has changed. And I go, really? Because I was too close sometimes. Sure, absolutely. I was too close. Yeah. It had to be a long-term perspective. Mm -hmm. And I had to just keep hanging in there and keep believing that he, we were getting somewhere, we were doing the right things, and he did. He is the sweetest child now. He's sweet because he understands what it means to struggle. Yeah. And he's so compassionate. If I ever have a bad day, he's coming alongside me going, Mom, you're going to be fine. I love you. <laughs> I love that. I love you. Yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. And I hope that what you're hearing from Cynthia today is really the heart of a follower of Christ and of a mom who loves her child. And, you know, children are all blessings. Mm -hmm. Whether they have challenges or they're perfectly normal, whatever that, whatever normal is, Children are a blessing, and God will, as their parents, give us everything we need. It's not always easy, though. And so some of the things I heard you say is that at one point you did get some medicine to help mm -hmm. Josh yes, out. Yes, I did. You did consult professionals. I you did. weren't thinking that you could do this all by yourself. Oh, no. Oh, no. I did. I did. In fact, we had a Christian man who was a Ph.D. in that area. And so since we were homeschooling, he was our accountability partner. Mm -hmm. And so I would mail him Caleb's handwriting. I would let him know what was going on. So if anybody questioned what we were doing with our homeschool, he could say, I believe she's doing fine. That's wonderful. Yes. And I think it's so good that you were wise and confident enough to know that you needed all of those pieces in order to make it work. Yes. Because sometimes when we're going through something like that, we want to shrink back. You know what I'm saying? And not let people know what we're going through. But you're saying letting professionals know, mm -hmm. praying about it. I bet you're a praying mom. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I prayed so much. I would pray. And the funny thing is I had so much to do. Mm -hmm. But the more I prayed, the more I got done. That's amazing. We've got we've to take a break. I want you to stay with us. When we come back, we're going to hear more about Cynthia L. Simmons, her family, her homeschooling, and some of the books and projects that she's working on as well. So stay with us. We're going to be right back in just a moment. You can purchase a copy of today's show for $15. Call us at 615-754-0039 or send a check to the address on the screen. Please mention the program number on the screen. For more information on a guest, visit our website, ctntv.org. Log on to www.ctntv.org, where you can make a prayer request, view our program guide, see who's on bridges, or even watch one of Monica's latest teachings. Log on to www.ctntv.org. If you are just joining us today on Bridges, my guest is Cynthia L. Simmons. And Cynthia has written several books. She's a speaker. She's got a radio show. She reaches out. She really has a heart to young moms that are bringing up children and homeschooling. And right now we're learning about her family, the struggles that she's faced, and how with God's help, she's been able to do some really hard and incredible things that I hope inspire your faith journey. And, you know, Cynthia, you were talking about really how your husband was a strong spiritual leader, very supportive and helpful in homeschooling all five of your children, including one of your five children who has special needs. And then God called you to write. Right. <laughs> and as you started to step out to write and author, your, your husband uh, became ill. He did. Just as my first book was coming out, my husband came down with encephalitis, which means his brain was infected. Mm -hmm. And people died of that. I mean, that was not something you survived from. And he had a very bad infection because I'm a registered nurse formally. And I was watching him. I mean, he got a temperature and a headache and that's really all we had 
for five days. And then when he rolled on the floor with a grand mal seizure, I thought, okay, something worse is happening here. Mm -hmm. So when we took him to the ER, from that point on, his memory was gone and they ran tests. And when they found what it was, it was very bad because oh. it had been five days. And so at first he just thought like headache, fever, no big deal. Yeah, we all get headaches flu. and fevers. Yeah. But grand mal seizure, trip to the ER, it's encephalitis and it's bad. And he was in the hospital 11 days mm -hmm. and they were putting medication through a major vein and he could have died. In fact, one doctor came in and said, he's not going to come home. He'll go to a rehab center if he lives and he'll be in a rehab center for six months. Mm -hmm. And I thought, Lord, is this about me writing? I don't think Satan wants me to do that. It was hard. It had to be very hard. So how did it, did he have to go to rehab or what did happen, Cynthia? No, I, I know my husband really well and I also know medicine well enough. I just had a sense that that wasn't going to be the story. And as soon, but as soon as I heard that, I called the elders of my church and I said, I need, I need you guys. I need you to come pray over my husband. My husband is one of the elders. And they did that and we prayed together and he responded in graciousness to them. Even though the doctors couldn't get him to talk, he responded in graciousness. And I said, I just really believe he's going to come through this. Mm -hmm. And you know, there were so many tough times, but there were also such beautiful times because there was one day I was sitting beside his bed thinking, you know, I, he can't talk to me. We can't interact. He's confused. He doesn't know where he is. And a person on the phone called me on the phone and said, we feel so bad about this. We work with your husband. We adore him. What can I send you? And I thought, oh, you're so kind. You know, I just, I can't ask for anything. I hung up the phone and I envisioned a dish garden about so big with some flowers that, or plants that would last a long time so they wouldn't just die. I didn't say anything, I didn't tell that to anybody. But the next day, you know what walked in my room? A dish garden, <laughs> this big, with flowers, and you know, it filled the window seat where we were. And I thought, the Lord is gracious, and he knows where we are, mm -hmm. and he's telling me, you're not alone. Yeah. And Ray came through it amazingly. He went home from the hospital in 11 days, was dismissed to home. He could do all the things they said he wouldn't be able to do. Now, we did have heightened emotions, and we did have to work for a long time on some speech issues and, and memory issues because he couldn't think very clearly for very long for a mm -hmm. time. But he is on the top 3% of people who have that disease. That's amazing. Yeah. It took him four years. Mm -hmm. to completely get control of himself and his emotions. So we had four really tough years, but we made it. You know, when I hear that, and I think that it took four years to make the complete recovery, we're talking about faith in action. We're yes. talking about a lot of prayer. I don't know if you're like me, I want my prayer to be answered the moment that I say amen. Mm -hmm. I'm not usually thinking that this is going to take you know, even days or weeks or months, but years. Yeah. And so your children had to observe all of that as yeah. well. Yeah. Well, I mean, that wasn't all that happened. As soon as I brought him home from the hospital on IV medication, I got a call from my father in Chattanooga. My mother had fallen and broken her hip, mm -hmm. and he wanted me to take care of her because I'm the nurse in the family. And I was thinking, I can't leave my right. husband. Right. And so I was doing phones back and forth, mm -hmm. seeing to her care. He died while she was still sick. And I was doing phone, you know, talking to nurses and doctors because I couldn't go up there. And in fact, she got sick with something. She got sick with C. diff. And if I had gone to take care of her, I could have killed my husband when I came home. It was a lot on your plate. It and was. this is all at the time, and you're homeschooling, and this is all at the time that God has called you to step out and to start exactly. writing. Exactly. And so how did you manage? Well, my older kids were older. Okay. And they're, they're terrific kids. And so my daughter managed the homeschooling. My son kept the house clean. Um, I had one of them that managed the phone. I didn't have to do anything because they took over. And I'm so thankful that they had the graciousness mm -hmm. to pick up where mm -hmm. I failed, you know, where I couldn't. Well, and that, that you had raised them to be those kinds yes. of children, yes. that they could uh, accept that level of responsibility yeah. when they're not completely grown, I'm, yeah. you know, that they could do that, that they weren't, you know, still needing all of your help, yeah. it helped you to be able to continue to write, to right. care for your husband, yeah. to do the things that you needed to do. So tell me, because I know that you've got a radio show, you've got several books, tell me kind of the heart and the mission of your ministry. Well, I want to help women to get a grasp and to understand 
the elegance of God's wisdom mm -hmm. because that makes all the difference in life. Because, you know, we think sometimes think of God as being someone who is angry or demanding, mm -hmm. but He is gracious. He is the God who knew my thoughts in that awful moment in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And rather than giving me what I envisioned this big, He gave me this big. Mm -hmm. And that is beautiful. That's what I want women to see is that He can give you abundant life. And he, and he did that and is still doing that for you and for yes. anyone who trusts you in the middle of what I'm hearing, in the middle of struggles and storms and trials. Yeah. You had to continue to go through all of that and then begin to write and now you're speaking and you do a radio show as yeah, well. I do. So tell me a little bit about those things if you would. Well, I'll tell you how the radio got started. My son became an electrical engineer. He went to Georgia Tech and graduated, and he's now got a master's degree. But when he left home the first time for his first job, he was leaving, I'm mean, going out of town. He said, Mom, I don't need this anymore. You can use it. It was audio software. And he said, you might be able to figure out something to do with this. And I looked at it, and I thought, my son is really brilliant, mm -hmm. and I might have a few of his genes. <laughs> How about that? And yeah, so, you brought him in the world. <laughs> yeah. So I thought, I think I can figure this out. And so I began to mess with it, like he told me to, and I was at that time president of my writing group. And so I thought, well, I'll just announce a few events with a podcast. And so that's what I started with. And, of course, there was a snow at the beginning and snow at the end. <laughs> but I eventually learned to right. cut that out. Mm -hmm. I got the echoes out of the background and so on and so yeah, I figured it out. Yeah, I think that's really interesting that you kind of were self-taught on all of those things and yeah. that you just kind of figured it out by, you know, just practicing with this and practicing with that. And yeah. now you've got this radio show that all kinds of women listen to and learn from. What are some of the feedback that you get from some of the women who hear your radio interviews and your shows, and you talk about the elegance of God's wisdom. What are some of the feedback that you get? Oh, people are very thankful and very gracious. And, you know, and I, I have a lot of people even overseas. I have like 15 foreign countries that tune in. Mm -hmm. So it's, it really is being heard. Yes. Yeah. Yes. What kind of feedback do they give you about it? Like, how does it change their lives? Are you, are you able to share anything? From well, that? let me see if I can think of one lady. I think she said that that was exactly what she needed to hear on so many different levels. I interviewed a lady um, whose, whose mother was schizophrenic mm -hmm. and it was Mother's Day. And because, you know, Mother's Day isn't always pleasant no, for everybody. No, it's not. For a lot of people, they're estranged. You know, there are all kinds of things that make sometimes the Mother's Day holiday. Um, People have a lot of unmet expectations, a lot of disappointments. Yes, yes. And so what did you hear? And she was saying that helped me so much, not just on one level, but on multiple levels to be able to understand what I walked through. And so I was so thrilled that what we did was able to minister to yeah. her soul. Yeah, it's really, really rewarding. And for me, you know, to hear you say that in the middle of, you know, that your husband's uh, encephalitis and that struggle that really your writing ministry was birthed because I know that it you've was. written several books. And um, so tell me a little bit about, um, you know, some of the books that you've written. Well, the one that is out right now is called Pursuing Gold, and it is about a Confederate bank. And, you know, that seems kind of odd for me to get interested in banking because I'm a nurse. Right. But my husband is the financial side, and so he kind of got me in, interested in the financial side. And, of course, I've always loved history, so I just kept researching until I kind of unearthed what Confederate banking was about. And I thought, well, now this might be a topic that could be a little dull. So I made it, <laughs> I mean, it's a bank after all. Right. So I made it a mystery. Mm -hmm. so that you have to figure out who is counterfeiting money against the bank. And in order to keep the bank alive, they have to pursue gold. And pursuing gold is pursuing God. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So, and this is this book is out right now, Pursuing Gold? Yes. Okay. Yes. So tell me about some of your other books and the things that God has given you to share with people. Well, I've also got a book that is written about... Um, Women in History, where I go and just go into history and show different women who, and what they have done. For instance, one lady who pursued gold is Catherine von Bora, who was the wife of Martin Luther, because mm -hmm. she was trained as a nun. Her, her family was wealthy, but when her father got married to the second wife, his, her mother died. Uh, when he got married to the second wife, he put her in a convent with her aunt, and mm -hmm. she never came out until Martin Luther began to preach they were putting his stuff, his literature, into the convent. 
she came to know Christ, and she and a bunch of other nuns left, and then later she married Martin Luther. Well, the Duke put her into the, um, the Black Cloister, which was the convent, not the convent, but the monastery, and she said, we need money. So <laughs> it was a school, so she turned the monastery into a boarding house. And by the time she, her husband died, he was the wealthiest man in the whole area, even the Duke. That's because an amazing of her story. Ability. She had farms. She sold beer in the town square. She was <laughs> helping people. People would come to the door. They were poor and hungry and needy. She would get them well and hire them. That's amazing. So you've done so many things and a variety of different things, from yes. homeschooling to having a heart for young moms, and, yes. and we've got just a minute left. But what keeps you going? I'm blessed. And because the Lord encouraged me, like it says in 2 Corinthians 1, I have a responsibility to give that away. It's not for me. It was not just for me. It's for me to give away. Yeah, yeah. and to help others be exactly. able to um, walk into the blessings that you and your family has. Yes. And I think it's a picture, Cynthia, of we all, you know, we all have stuff in our lives. And exactly. But you, you prayed through, you walked through, you trusted God. I did, and I'm still doing it. Yeah, and you'll continue to do yeah, it, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> well, we want to keep up with you and continue to see the things that God has you to do. Thank you so much for coming Thank today. Thank you for having me. We will have all of Cynthia L. Simmons' information up on the website if you missed any of it today so that you can tune in to her radio program and just all of the other things that she does as well. We are completely out of time, so we've got to go, but we say goodbye and God bless you. The blood of Christ is the only cure. It gets down to the root of every single thing that ails us. There's not an addiction, there's not a generational curse, there's not any root of sin, there's nothing that the blood of Jesus cannot cleanse. Visit monicaschmelter.com to schedule Monica to speak at your event. When I truly turned my heart to the Lord, He took every sin I ever did away from me. Amen. He took all the bad things I did. He took away everything that I felt like I felt short. God is so good. God healed me. And doctors told me I would, that's, that disease was something that could never be cured. It can be controlled. The start is what stops most people, you know? <laughs> it's, it's no good to have a big dream if you're not putting yourself in motion to yes. go after that. Is that butterfly, that excitement of the new relationship, once that goes away, what you're left with, is that something that you're okay with? And once they start buying into the truth mm -hmm. about themselves, then they can begin the change, that process of change in their life. Join the Bridges community on Facebook. Visit Facebook and search for Bridges with Monica. We would love to connect with you.